Major topic at the UN, climate change. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is hoping to have the Paris climate change fully ratified before his term ends this year. For more on climate change, we're joined by Paul Bledsoe. He's an expert on energy and the former director of communications of the White House Climate Change Task Force under the Clinton administration. Paul, welcome. Hi, Asya. Uh, let's talk about what happened at UN in New York. A lot of numbers going around, a lot of progress. Can you kind of walk us through what happened? A remarkable outpouring of support for the Paris Agreement. Um, when it was agreed to last December, the thought was that it would take effect maybe 2018, 2019. It's almost certainly going to enter into force this year, uh, but has less than a year before on? it's negotiated. Uh, the the agreement requires 55 countries. We've passed that mark. We now have over 60, 60 mm -hmm. and 55 percent of emissions. We're at about 48 percent of emissions. Uh, we expect to get the remaining 7 percent in the next month or two. It could be done in one fell swoop, for example, if the European Union were to approve it. Are they the sole holdout here, the European no, Union? No. Um, it's just it takes uh, governments time to do these things practically in their legislatures. But the truth is it's going to go into effect this year, which is really stunning. Uh, no one expected it. And I think it's for two reasons. The first is climate change impacts around the world are beginning to have huge economic costs. Uh, the U.S. government released a study last week that the Louisiana floods that left 60,000 homes destroyed or damaged were made 50 percent more likely because of climate change. These are the kind of numbers that are getting government's attentions. The other thing, I think, is that the pro possible prospect of a Donald Trump presidency is frightening to many world leaders, given what he said, calling climate change a hoax and even a Chinese conspiracy. So I believe there's an effort to get this done while Obama and Ban Ki-moon are in office. You mentioned the flooding in Louisiana. There have been devastating floods in China. Yes. China has led the effort in this process. How is China's own effort here, Paul? Can it be a model for other countries, countries like India, perhaps? I'm headed to India on Sunday to talk just about this kind of thing. Yes, China has been an incredible leader in the last two years on climate change. In fact, what galvanized the whole entry into force process was an agreement between President Xi and President Modi both to approve the treaty. And that, in and of itself, gave us 40 percent of the emissions we needed. Now China and other major economies need to make investments in less developed nations, including India, to give them the infrastructure to modernize while reducing emissions. Let me give you an example. India's cooling sector, air conditioning sector, is due to grow 400 percent in the next 15 years. If we do that with the most efficient technologies, Indian consumers will save $120 billion over that period and will avoid warming of half a degree centigrade. These are huge numbers, huge economic and climate change opportunities that the world's major economies have to grab. So why has India seemingly been a little slow in this process, certainly not as speedy as China? India is an earlier point in development. Uh, Prime Minister Modi is very focused on poverty alleviation. We still have more than 300 million uh, Indians who live in dire poverty, who have no access to electricity. And so th their development agenda is important. However, President, Prime Minister Modi has a big opportunity coming up. This is a, a separate negotiation called the Montreal Protocol about HFCs, which are, are uh, chemicals used as coolants in refrigeration. These are super greenhouse gases that warm thousands of times more than CO2. If we can phase out these chemicals, we will reduce warming by a full uh, half a degree Celsius. So taken together, phasing out HFCs and energy efficiency can cut warming a full degree Celsius in this century. India has an opportunity to do that, um, and I'm going to be discussing that next week with the government and others. And very quickly, the next session is in November in Morocco. Is that accurate? That's the next UN uh, session, but I think that the eyes should be on the Kigali Rwanda talks on HFCs. That's October 10th through 14th. Got it. Paul Bletso, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.